Hey, how's it going everyone? This is the Anime Man. Welcome back to some more Sound of Drop Fall into Poison. So last episode, we fucking found some disgusting fish corpses and a head corpse and we vomed. And now we're in this really nice looking place. Um, so we have to decide now to... You feel worried about him and all of a sudden go back? Or going back is dangerous, I can't do anything by stopping, you have to press on. I think we're going to... I think we're just gonna keep on going. Let's press on. I want to explore this area a little bit. Going back is dangerous. I can't do anything by stopping here. I have to press on. And so I start towards the starry sky. I gaze in fascination to the right and left of me. If circumstances weren't what they are, I would have stopped and stared into each and every tank. The tanks lined up all together are beautiful enough, but each one is vivid like the night sky invalid with jewel inlaid with jewels. Invalid? <laughs> Although there are seven tanks, each one holds a different type of jellyfish, some with poison, some without, categorized by as aspects such as where they live. They really are beautiful. I stop and stand in the very center between the third and fourth tanks. I wonder if the last time we came, these tanks were here. Nakanobe Mari, my little sister. I lean my back against one of the tanks and sit down. Whenever Marty's face appears in my mind, I lose all my strength. If anyone saw me, I'd be embarrassed. But here and now in Mountain Aquarium, there is no one around. I heave a sigh and look up at the ceiling. For some reason, a large fan is revolving there. My memories of the last time we visited Mountain Aquarium aren't all bad. It was the first time in a long time all four of us had gone out as family. Marty and I got along really well, and we always held hands as we walked. We would do things like playhouse or read picture books aloud. Muddy was a bit more of a tomboy than I, so even though I was the older sister, she was the one who gave the orders. Since it was the first time the two of our sisters went to the aquarium, it was natural for us to be very excited. Just as one would expect, the first time Muddy and I laid eyes on the sea creatures of the sea, we experienced fear, awe, and the sense of being deeply moved. The creatures we saw at that time have stayed with me as vivid memories. Happy memories. I still have plenty of them. But on such a special day of all days, Muddy and I ended up fighting. The rest proceeded just as I remember. Since then, my parents buy me anything I want. However, I changed as well, and I didn't really want anything anymore. Greed itself seemed to decline for me, and I never really got excited for anything. That's why when my mother brought me those boot sandals, I was happy. I was fascinated by the nostalgic ultramarine color. About one year after Muddy disappeared, she stopped coming up in conversation. I don't know if my mother and father had accepted it as a tragic accident, or if the sadness had slowly faded, but my new normal had begun. I had become an only child. But that is nothing more than an excuse I can't escape from. Muddy, you're here, right? Finally, it seems my strength has returned and I stand up. Even though I ask, no answer will come. The thundering ventilation fan in the ceiling is the only sound I can hear. It was almost at the same time I stood up. Uh, yeah! A crack appears in the glass of the tank behind me. Since the glass doesn't make any noise when it splits, I realize it's broken when water splashes on my rear end. Water continues to flow out, gradually spreading to my feet. The amount of water from the tank is more than just puddles after a heavy downfall. Along with the water flowing forth, the jellyfish had been in the tank until just a moment ago float out. In order to avoid contact with the water already soaking my sandals, I step back from the puddles without looking away. How? Why? As if to play further with my already bewildered mind, the tank behind me also cracks. Shit! Jellyfish storm! Oh god, they're all cracking! Ah! The time I hear the high pitched noise of glass cracking, following that, the tanks are each destroying turn. Yeah, man, this place is haunted! Oh fuck! Oh jeez, that's jellyfish hell right there. That ain't good. From being stuck in the middle of the passage, water closing. Water is closing in on me from all sides, leaving me pressed in between. The edge of the water is steadily drawing near. What should I do? The words that slide from my mouth also flow away with the water. The colors of the tanks that had once been so vibrant now seem eerie to me. Among these jellyfish are poisonous ones. Even worse, some of them are fatal. On thinking that, my legs begin to shake in fear. No. But no matter how frightened I become, I know I can't sit down. As if the area I mean is shrinking, water and jellyfish are both heading towards me, and it's impossible for me to touch the floor. Oh, fuck. Alright, what do we do? I have no choice but to run straight through, or no, I can't think of anything. Uh... I have a feeling if I just stay here, then we're fucked. Run straight through! I have no choice but to run straight through. I no longer have time for doubt. 
At a glance, the door on the opposite side is closer than the one I came through. From here, the distance isn't too far to the interior door. Running at top speed should be good enough to reach that one. I hesitate for a moment, then grip my teeth and take off running. It's no more than 10 meters. It is a distance that should pose no trouble, even for someone like me who tested below average in physical endurance. Yeah! When I had run about 5 meters, just having passed the 6 tank, I fall full force onto my back. The floor is wet, so one might say this should have been expected. No, oh, this is disgusting. The water soaks through my skirt and quickly soaks my underwear. The, water t the tank water is in direct contact with the skin on my rear. It is cold and wet, uncomfortable, but unavoidable. When I put my hand on the floor to try to stand up, I discover that action is a mistake. Oh, ouch. I squeeze my eyes shut at the pain that feels like it's been stabbed by a cold metal needle. No, it doesn't just feel like it. I've been stabbed by something. Have I been stung by... Shaking, I shift my liner off side to my hands. A jellyfish is covering my right hand. At that moment, I get upset that I can't feel the coldness of the water around my right hand. I got stung. What do I do? Someone! The pamphlet introducing the jellyfish has gotten mixed up with the pieces of glass from the tank. Man of War. Oh fuck, aren't those the most fatal ones? I noticed the name without much of a reaction, but it has to be poisonous to be called that. There have also been incidents of fatalities. Fatalities. Fatality. Poison. What do I do if I've been stung? Do I clean it? Is it bad if I don't clean it? I can feel my pulse quickening. I wonder if it's the poison making its way through me. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? When I try to will myself to calm down, my impatience ramps up. Someone! Someone help me! Oh shit! No! Trying to use my pulsating right hand for support to push myself up, I slide in the puddle and can't stand. It hurts. It really hurts. I put water on the area where I'd been stung in and attempt to rinse it out. However, the opening of the wound stings and startles me. I need fresh water. Trying to apply pressure to the vein, I tightly grip the area where I've been stung. Dad. Mom. Himeno. Mari. Wanting to be safe, I call out as loudly as I can. However, in reality, my voice has already grown hoarse, the corners of my eyes grow hot, and from then, fall independent droplets. No, I, I'm going to die. My voice is no longer really a voice at all. Ah. Before long, an electric shock runs through my right hand. The subsiding of the intense pain brings my senses back to me, but my voice will no longer come out. Even when I try to think of something, nothing happens except a sensation of pain whirling inside me that fills me to the brim. Unable to control my body, I fall to the ground. First my head, then my chest, from my stomach to my feet. Having fallen on my face, half of my body submerged in water. My heartbeat quickens. I become actually aware of the flow of my blood. <clears throat> Unable to stand it, I vomit. The very idea of being able to endure it, it no longer occurs to me. Even so, the poison won't be expelled from my body. My entire being becoming numb is proof that my blood has been pumping so quickly it has worn down my veins. <sighs> <sighs> Wanting to rinse out the remaining vomit in my mouth, I suck in water. It tastes like salt. Within my body, I'm struggling with all I have. On the outside, my shell has long exceeded the limits of its stamina. Blood is soaking through the capillaries of, in my eyeballs, and the puddles spreading on the floor are pierced with red. Gradually, I stop feeling my blood flow. It is because my heart stopped, or because my consciousness has disappeared. Either way, my consciousness stops and fades into the darkness. With the same simplicity that a ventilation fan spews out old air, my breath is evacuated from my body. Fuck! Wait, I'm still alive. What the fuck? When I came to, I'm still gazing into the cylindrical tank, vacantly, thinking nothing other than, I wonder if something's in there. I just stare into that tank. I have neither the urge to call out, nor the desire to walk away. Merely the sensation that my consciousness alone is floating along the rippling sea. Why on earth am I here anyway? What have I come to do here to do? Whether I can't remember, or there was just no reason from the beginning. The jellyfish are pretty, especially the jellyfish, its colours are so bright. That voice that starts talking right in front of me catches my attention for some reason. I feel like I've heard it before somewhere. Well, who is it? I'm unable to remember clearly, seeing only a wavering face that won't come into focus. Anyway, Mayu, where did she go? Mayu? That girl she talks like she was looking for someone. Poor thing. If she's lost someone here, she probably won't find them. Hmm, wait a second. Where is this to begin with? Swaying softly, swaying, swaying, softly, softly. Drip, drop, drip, 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 drip,
drop, the sound of drops resonating all around me. Gradually ceasing to care, my consciousness melts into the water. My form. Wait, was this a bad end? Did I die? Did I? Did I die? God damn it! Ah! I mean, thanks for the cute graphic and all. Wow, this is the cutest bad end screen I've ever seen. <laughs> well, there you go. That's uh, one of the first bad ends. God damn it! Okay, so it seems that the red uh, titles, these red choices. Uh, depending on your answer, you get the bad end. So I'm gonna. Qu I just quickly went back because we're gonna we're gonna try and get all the endings. I know it might take a while, but we're gonna try and get all the endings. So that ending just then was the second bad ending, and here's the first bad ending. So I wonder if Muddy came this way. Uh, this time we're gonna go. I feel worried about him, and all of a sudden I'll go back. Let's see how this ending fares. Hopefully it's not as fucking brutal as. Death by Jellyfish. That would fucking suck. I feel worried about him and all of a sudden. I'll go back. Upon thinking whether or not it's alright for just me to enjoy something so pretty, I reach for the door behind me. Even though we fought, Himeno and I are friends. Sharing such a lovely memory will surely help me make up quickly. I step forward, and it is at that moment... Huh? When I open the door and step through, there is no fish at the world booth. Before I can even rationalize the scene before me, I'm pulled in by some sort of swell. What? Uh. Trying to figure out what's wrong, I realize I'm having trouble getting air. I really want air, so I pause my breath. My mouth fills with the fishy stench. Brine. Seawater. I know from the salty taste that I've swallowed seawater. The reason I can't breathe is because all around me is ocean water. What the fuck? I understand that I'm in the ocean, devoid of light. No light and no sound in the darkness. Wondering why, I move my limbs. At this rate, I will drown. It has been more than a minute since I got pulled under the sea. How many seconds have passed at this point? No, that's it. That isn't it. I have to get above water. However, up to this point, there has been no light overhead, and I'm forced into an inevitable battle with my despair. I frantically endure my suffocation, swimming higher and higher. Suddenly being thrown into the water hasn't thrown off my sense of up and down as the desire to live serves as an instinct to guide me upwards. I still can't see, but I'm alright. Just like that, I've seen, I seem to have answered my own question. I can feel the clothes I'm wearing become heavy. However, if I have time to shed my clothes, then I have time to continue upward. My thinking is that alone. I've heard there is high pressure in the deep part of the ocean that crushes any living thing, but my body's completely fine. That means where I am at the moment shouldn't be that deep. If I swim hard enough, I should make it. I just have to hit the surface and take a deep breath. How many seconds have passed at this point? I have no sense of time whatsoever in this darkness. Even so, I know that some point has passed since I was thrown into the ocean. A minute probably passed a while ago. Here my consciousness has begun to fade. I mean, immediately after I see the darkness of death, a small light illuminates the tip of my nose. <gasps> We're gonna make it! Because I have been swimming so frantically, I haven't noticed, but it seems as though I've gone up quite a ways. It will be all right. The surface is close. I'm gonna make it! I reach out my hand. I reach out towards that light. This is all I can do. That's because my legs won't move. No matter how frantically I try to move them, my legs won't even quiver. It feels as if something has ensnared them. It has the elasticity of a bottomless trampoline. From the tips of my toes to my rear end, that soft sensation wraps tightly around me. I want to think this is a lie. No, I have actually decided I will not believe it. That a giant octopus has wrapped itself around my legs. God damn it, octopus! It's gum like suckers are the size of the palm of my hand. I can't even imagine how large its entire body is. No! The light is getting further away. My eyes have already closed. For some reason, Himino's smiling face floats before me, though it should be her angry face that I see last. No! Just like that, I'm in darkness. As much as it has tightened up, my legs have lost all feeling. No wonder, my legs are no longer what they were once were. With the depletion of my oxygen supply, my brain has already changed into a machine for merely processing my situation. Within the darkness, it dispassionately communicates my non-existent will 
to my four limbs, which have lost all sensation. It won't be long before the only thing I can sense is darkness. That's because I've already become part of that darkness. Into the silent abyss. While the fucking bad end. Once again. Yeah! <laughs> Man. The way you die in these games so far is fucking brutal. Death by drowning via octopus or death by jellyfish stung sting. Which one do you choose? Holy shit, look at how many endings. There's four true ends and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty-seven bad ends. This might be a long playthrough. Get ready to strap yourselves in, guys. All right, well, running through the fucking jellyfish didn't do much, so uh, uh, I guess I'll just stay here and hope for something to resolve, I guess. No, I can't think of anything. i am become panicked if I don't calm down with my thoughts swelling around so frantically. I'm getting even more confused. It's a vicious cycle. My sandals are getting dirty. Don't wor fucking worry about your sandals, bruh. You gotta think about the death all around you. It isn't the first thing that occurs to me, but regardless, it's my only clear thought. The puddles of water are gradually drawing closer, and I can't feel anything from the strange, strange, and I can can't feel anything from the strange jellyfish. I feel my heartbeat speed up as my chest starts to hurt from nervousness. Oh God, they're gathering! At this point, I have to run through without worrying about my sandals. Though they are sandals, the soles are strong. As long as the jellyfish don't jump, I probably won't get stung. Little by little, the safe spots are disappearing. I tightly pull my legs together, which makes me stagger. Oh shit. Kya! I let out a small scream and straighten up a bit. With nothing behind me to lean against, I'm just about cornered. I wonder if I'll die of jellyfish poison. Rocked by waves of blended nervousness of fear, I carelessly entertain that line of thinking. The meat of gouging my feet must be in full tilt. I think with cool self-deprecation. You! From earlier! Huh? Oh my god, it's Pervy McPerv Perv! The sudden yell confuses me. Upon looking in the direction of the voice, I see that the door has been thrown open and a man is standing there. Shoot! Why are your feet exposed? Ugh, can't be helped. That is definitely he son. The man who had called names is now... Wait, the, the man we had called names is now gently removing his shoes and tossing them over to me. My mind races as I catch them. They are thick soled boots. Put those on and make your way over here. All the jellyfish floating here have deadly poison. Be careful. I take off my sandals and put my feet into his boots just as he tells me to. The size doesn't fit at all and they are way too big, but not so big I can't walk in them. I cautiously take a step and, confirming it's alright, take my second, then third steps towards him with my sandals in one hand. Thank you very much. You can thank me later. For now, don't look around. Just come toward me. I know my breathing is increasingly rough and I get a little embarrassed. However, knowing some conscious concessions will have to be made, I walk through the water and over the jellyfish. When I step on a jellyfish, I feel the squishing sensation through the shoot and shudder. No, Mr. Jellyfish! There are shards of glass in the puddles that makes and that makes me want to thank your son for being considerate enough to lend me such strong shoes. I can walk the remaining meter. Your son seems fairly close. Adjusting my breathing, I carefully take the remaining three steps. Ah! There is no mistake, in my carelessness, I've overlooked a transparent jellyfish in my feet. Even though I can't see it, I can clearly feel it, and the baggy boots I wear throw off my balance. At this rate, I will end up on my butt. If I fall now, all of the help I have received will be for nothing. Watch out! However, my body is supported by some strength that pulls me back. Hyo-san's right hand is grabbed onto my left wrist. It was so close. It was a close one. Just like that, I had been pulled out of the room with the broken tanks. As soon as I was out of danger, Hyo-san gave a mighty pull and shut the fire door. Hyo-san to the rescue! Yeah! Nailed it! This is... In front of the souvenir stand. More importantly, why are you here? Hyo-san steadies me against the wall in front of the souvenir stand. The terror from a moment ago has, hasn't escaped through the heavy, dark grey emergency door. Isn't this... isn't this Mountain Aquarium? Besides, before I met up with you, Hyo-san, I... there was so much... Hyo-san just stares at me in my flustered state. Um, I... Uh... Alright, calm down, Maicha. A way, a wry grin appears on his son's face, and he motions in front of the souvenir stand before sitting down. Today, I have nothing but bad memories in relation to the floor, so I merely lean against the wall. 
the Gacha Gacha machines are still there, but the whole lineup is new, and I don't know a single one of the products. Damn, son! She just went through some serious shit, y'all. God damn. Alright guys, we're going to end this episode right here. A little bit shorter than the last episode, but I think this is a good place to end it. Well, man, some serious shit just happened. Uh, we're going to fucking... Is that, has it become dark already? Like, has everything closed down? I guess we're going to find out next episode. So, uh, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. As always, like and favorite if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more Anime Banner, and I'll see you guys next video, whatever I make. Keep watching Anime. Johnny!